G'day, our names are Sarah and Keelan and this is our 2016 Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. This is our VX 202's Land Cruiser. It's got the one VDJ, 4.5 litre twin turbo diesel engine in it. It's got a six speed automatic. When we bought the car, it had 59,000 on the clock. We actually bought it about a year ago, but only started modifying it four or five months ago. We, we sat it in a shed for a little while while we did Cape York. Couldn't manage, was racking the debt, made it hard to see family. I ran out of panic, I started to grind at the studio. Don't tell my girl I was homeless. Was wasting a time that we could have spent. Too focused, not folding, I'm used to this. I'm not good. The considerations for the build, uh, we obviously wanted to keep it lightweight as possible. These vehicles are renowned to have GVM, GCM issues. So we had to keep all that in line, in check. So everything we bolted to the car didn't just have to be high quality, but it also had to be super lightweight. So that's where the research come into it. And we probably spent a year and a half planning this build before we even had the car. Let me stop for a minute to see all the shit that we never did. So a 3.3 ton off-road caravan, so it had to be, still be able to do that. Also, we wanted it to be a little bit unique, so we didn't want to copy anyone's build that's already out there. We wanted this to be sort of one of a kind in Australia um, at the moment that we know of. We've been on the road for two years now, so this is our dream car. We finally got it, and uh, we're so excited to run you through it, so let's get into that. I used to wish I was current me. I'm excited to see who I'm finna be. I'm ready to grow to a better person. Looking back, I'm already a better person. If you hate me, they hate me so big. G'day, turkeys. Oricom are turning 20 years old. And what better way to celebrate than give you some free stuff? So we're giving away three handheld UHFs. They're valued at over 200 bucks a pop. All you have to do to win those is find the secret code word in the video I've hidden somewhere. Plus, you have to be subscribed to the channel. Yes, you have to be subscribed. Along with the code word, Comment your favorite modification. We bolted to Leroy the Land Cruiser and you can win yourself a UHF. Thanks heaps for the support and I hope you enjoy the video. All right guys, we'll start up the front here. We got the off-road animal Toro bar and we've had it color coded to match the car. So there's a few reasons why we've chosen this bar. The first one obviously being weight. So a lot of the bars add a lot of weight to your car. This one actually varies in thickness of steel. Obviously your winch cradle has five mil steel. Uh, but in different parts of the bar, it's actually different variations of thickness. So pretty well, they've cut down as much weight as they can, but obviously not sacrificing why you have a bull bar in your car, which is for animal strikes. So good mate, Harry Fisher from Fire to Fork has one of these bull bars on his Prado. He's had it for a long time now, and he reckons these bars stop roos quicker than he can cook two minute noodles. Which is Moving on, we've got the 8.5 inch steady spotlights up the front here. Uh, they've been working an absolute treat. We've also got the 22 inch integrated in the bar. So that's something that off-road animal allow you can either have steady or light force in your bar itself which is pretty cool it looks real neat in there we've also mounted the worn 12,000 pound evo winch probably more lightweight winches out there to be honest with you but we just couldn't look past worn for its reliability and it's synonymous in the industry for quality so that's why we went that way uh, we've got the flip up number plate which is essential you don't lose them through river crossings and stuff we found that one out the hard way um, the off-road animal continues down into bash plates as well. Off-road animal Toro bar and this whole assembly here weighs under 100 kilos. So that's winch bar um, and the two lights that are mounted to it. So that's pretty impressive. So normally a bar itself would weigh around 85, 90 before you add winch and all that stuff. So to get that around that 100 kilo mark is bang on what we wanted. So we've got the bonnet protector up the front here. This is just a cheap eBay special. We've got um, talking about color code and paint. We've actually wrapped the car in a bush wraps kit. So this is one of their DIY kits. You can pay someone in each state to do it. Um, it's been working really good. So the, the extremities of the sides of the car is wrapped. However, the bonnet and the roof isn't. So yeah, that's one thing we probably would have done next time is wrap the bonnet to protect it from the sun. Um, however, the side parts are definitely holding up really well. And this PPF is self healing. So if you park your car in the sun after you go down the stripy track, um, and you got a lot of bush drops, the, the, the um, bush wraps will actually heal itself, which is really cool as well. So we've got the Safari R-Max snorkel as well. 
um, which was a must for us. We tow a caravan, we put the engine under a lot of stress, so we've got to get it breathing good. We've also got the clear view mirrors. These aren't powerful, these are their basic ones. It come with the car, they were silver, but we couldn't have silver wing nuts hanging off the sides of the car. Uh, we've got window shades and also dark tint on the windows as well. Uh, you're probably thinking, why don't you have uh, rock sliders? This was one of the compromises that we had to do on the vehicle to keep it underweight. Um, sliders would have added another 50 plus kilos. So we've kept the factory ones for now. Yes, they are plastic. Um, we haven't done any tracks yet, but as soon as they bend, I'll be putting sliders on. It's just for now. Um, we need to rejig some of our weight um, distribution. Obviously touched on the mirrors, but we've got this Oricom 3D by antenna and it's mounted to a K on bracket. So they utilize factory points. So these guys make some sick bracketry for vehicles. Definitely look at Kayon. If you want to mount something to your car, chances are they've got a bracket already pre-cut powder coated for you. Uh, we swear by it, really high quality um, and really strong as well. We run the Oricom stuff and Oricom are actually giving away a UHF, which we've already spoken about. So if you guys did want 15% off the Oricom website, so everything Oricom, UHFs, you name it, SKT15 is your code. Use that in the checkout and you'll get 15% off anything you've got in your cart. So don't forget that one, it'll save you a couple quid. All right, let's talk lift tires, uh, all that jazz. So it's probably everyone's favorite thing to talk about with cars. Now we've chosen a, um, a GVM kit with this. It come with 3.6, so 3,600 kilo GVM upgrade. That wasn't enough for us. We've gone for the four ton. So we've gone old man Amy nitro charger shocks and it's GVM to four ton now. That's fully engineered. Uh, a few things you got to consider when you do a GVM upgrade is can your rims take the extra weight? So these are ROH 17 inch assault rims. They're positive 35 offset and they're rated to 1500 kilos each, meaning we can have six ton of weight on these rims and they're still rated, which is pretty cool. Also your tires. We've chosen to run a Maxxis Razor MT. So mud terrain's the first time we've ever run a Maxxis tire. Uh, we've gone with the 295 70 17. So that is almost a 34 inch tire um, and we've gone with the muddies because we love muddies when we're touring they just seem to be really tough thick tread on them um, and hard to puncture so with that being said the tires can do gvm the rims can do gvm another thing you've got to consider is the offset of the rim because if you have any poke outside the guard they won't engineer it so there's a few other things you've got to consider there as well the reason we've chosen a two inch lift instead of like a three or a four inch lift we would love that um, we love the look of them and stuff but practicality wise it's just not there we don't want to have to use a step ladder to get in and out of the car and to be able to use the car it just doesn't make sense to us we live out of this thing so it has to be functional and practical that's our first and foremost thing so the two inch lift from old man amy have definitely done the job um, these aren't the remote resis these are just the standard nitro charger shocks and yeah they're doing a great job so far um, i know there's probably more comfier suspension out there but bang for buck um, we were trying to save a little bit of money here and this kit is around 5,000 bucks to put a GVM in the car, which is quite affordable compared to the other ones. And that's why we've chosen it. But we've chosen the assault rims in the graphite color. These are, this, this makes the car, I think. I reckon they look sick. It gets away from that black rim on a black tire look that everyone went for a long time, chucking a bit of um, graphite through the center. And these are 17 inch rims. Now VX and Sahara come with bigger disc brakes than the GXL and the GX models. So a lot of people don't actually realize you can still fit the 17 inch rims on the VX and the Saharas. Only a couple companies do it and ROH is one of them. We were BF Goodridge um, through and through, but now we've tried the Maxxis Razors purely because we couldn't get BFGs. And I'm really impressed with how the Maxxis are going. Like these tires are a lot quieter than the BFGs KM3s. And they seem to be wearing really well. We've only had about 10,000 on them um, so far, but yeah, they're a treat. And that didn't actually increase the fuel economy sorry, decrease the fuel economy too much, to be honest with you. Um, and our speedo, I think, is about three kilometers out when you go to a 295. And these are the max size tires. You can go with a four ton GVM upgrade in Victoria. Every state has different rules. So that's also a reason why we didn't go any bigger tire than this. If we went and put bigger um, offset rims on this now and had poke, we may not be insured for the GVM upgrade, meaning we might be overweight and uninsured. So there's a few things you got to think about, but yeah. We've also put these steady rock lights underneath here, which are red. Um, that lights up the ground and we've got that separately switched from inside the dash as well. All right, so moving down to the rear, like I said before, we've got the Airbag Man helper kit and purely that is just to level out the car. So the caravan ball weight's around 200 kilos and we have got a lot of weight hanging over the rear axle. 
Uh, so we needed that airbag or helper kit just to pretty much level out the car, which is doing the job really well. So we'll talk a bit about the airbags and how we up and down them. It's pretty cool, the system that we have. But uh, moving up to the roof, we're running the ARV base rack. The reason we chose this rack is because they're slimline first and foremost. I love the look, at them, look of them. Uh, they're around 20 kilos in weight, so they weigh bugger all and uh, they've got a wind deflector on the front. So that significantly reduces the wind noise you get in the cab. And the VX has a sunroof, so we still wanted to maintain the use of that sunroof, even though once you open it, you are looking at the bottom of the roof rack. You still can see the sky. Uh, we still wanted to ret retain that feature. So that's the reason why we went with this one. Uh, we've also got a Oricom bracket with the Selfie Go Booster on the side. Uh, that's really good. I actually use that for Selfie, but also to measure clearance levels under branches because that is quite high. It's almost the same height as the caravan. So I know if that hits a tree, tree branch or a tree limb hanging over our heads, the caravan's not gonna fit. So yeah, two functions for the Selfie Booster and it just folds down like so, which is really cool. Another reason why we chose this rack is because all the extremities, the tubing on the rack is actually hollow and we can run cables through the rack to get around the rack is really cool. Uh, means you don't have to drill holes and uh, we think that's pretty cool. So these caps here on the outside, they just unscrew and that gives you access to, to throw cables wherever you want, which we'll get into in a minute because a lot of people will be curious how we got power and uh, all of our cables up onto the roof. So moving around the back, we've mounted a 210 watt solar panel to the roof and that pretty much is big enough to keep all of our camera gear. Um, we've got a fridge in the back as well, which we'll get to in a minute everything charged up. We've also got inverters, all sorts of stuff in the car. So it was important to have a good solar system on the roof. So we didn't actually have to charge and move the car every day to keep them batteries charged. So we've got the Max Tracks mounted up there too. They're on them k -on brackets. These are stealth brackets, which I'll show you how they work. Really cool. So pretty much if you didn't have the Max Tracks on the roof, you can still mount things to your roof because that's obviously a number one thing. Roof real estate is a very, very uh, valued commodity. And a lot of the times everyone mounts a heap of stuff to the roof and they can't even throw a swag up there anymore. So very cool things that Kayon are doing um, and inventing. So this side of the rack, we've actually mounted a steady amber light to the side of it. It's a slimline light bar. It's, it's fully flood, so there's no spot in it. It actually shines a really good light down on the ground. And the idea behind that is the back of the car is really well lit up. We wanted to light up the side as well. We didn't think it was necessary to mount lights everywhere around the rack because majority of the time we're gonna be around this awning side which moves us onto the awning. We've gone with the Bush Company 270 degree XT awning. We actually bought this off our mate um, for dirt cheap second hand. Uh, we love this awning. Uh, we have nothing to do with Bush Company at all, but we really stand behind their awning. So far, we've had it up in some really good strong wind and it, uh, it hasn't budged. Now I can do chin ups off it. It's, it seems to be tough as nails. So I'm gonna quickly set up the awning now, but before I do that, I wanted to touch on, we've got a, a 41 inch steady spotlight up the top and that's got two different daytime running light colors, which because I'm a Sparky, I've actually put them through a three way switch so I can change that. And that definitely shines a lot of light. It's a massive light bar. And uh, a lot of the times we don't even take the covers off the front two lights. We just run the roof light because it does give a good spot and a good spread. But Let's set up the awning now. I'll show you just how easy it is to do this. This is probably one of our favorite things about the car. And before we had an awning that was like with the poles, like a conventional one, and we never wanted to set it up because it was just too hard, too much wind. And uh, yeah, we'd always have a fight trying to set it up because they are a bit of a pain. But these ones literally unzip it. You got two straps. When you pull it out, make sure this doesn't swing out and hit your paint because that does chip paint. Walk it around like so. How good is that? We've got space under here. And like I said, it's strong as nails. Um, what we should talk about is the brackets holding this up because this kit itself weighs around 25 kilos, so it's not light. We've got the K-on brackets up the top as well. Same mob that make the aerial bracket um, and a few other brackets that we've got on the car. Uh, they're very heavy duty steel, powder coated black. I'll give you a shot of those, but they're purpose built for the ARB base rack. So you don't have to drill any holes. They clamp to the rack itself. Fair bit of metal hanging up there and a fair bit of um, leverage off the roof rack itself. So when the wind gets up, you want the brackets to be strong because you don't want it to be moving your rack. So you can see it's actually moving the whole car me doing this. Check out the amount of um, undercover space we've got here. And like I said, this is our first 270 degree awning. And let me tell you, Freestanding is the way to go. I'm never going back to poles. There's just a pain. So 
Come around here, I'll open up the back and I'll show you probably my favorite part about the car. Before I open up the back, let's talk a little bit about the rear bar. So we've chosen to go with this rear bar because like I said, it's all about weight, right? And it's also a little bit about looks as well. We love the look of this rear bar. So we've gone with the Cruiser Company rear bar. They're made in Victoria because we were in Victoria at the time. So we got to go on their factory and stuff and have a look and they're really high quality. We love the look of it. They tuck up super high. So they cut higher into your bumper. They give you better departure angles. And uh, I love the sidebars as well. They protect the rear quarters. I think personally it ties in really well with the sides of the hoops on the off-road animal Toro bar. They both stick out about the same amount and we wanted to color code everything so it sort of ties in all together and it looks like it's from the same factory. So it definitely isn't, but yeah, really like these. We've got the road vision reverse lights on the outer parts of the, the rear bar. Uh, the rear bar incorporates all the VX reverse sensor functions um, we've also got another set of tail lights down there, indicator lights, reverse lights, and they've used their new billet caps. So the swing away arms, they've got a big ball bearing in them. They use a Toyota bearing, and that's what's actually controlling the, the uh, swing away arms, which is cool. And they've put a billet cap on the top to keep them nice and sealed. So let's open it up. Everything's really nicely etched. They've got Cruiser Company throughout everything. They've got gas struts. So pretty much when you open it, your arm doesn't get ripped off and you're not trying to push this massive heavy wheel. So. That's very important for us. Sarah can open it quite easily. Uh, they've just weighted everything really nicely. So come have a look. Um, I'll open up the back in a minute. But like I said, it tucks up really nice um, and we just love the look of it. I honestly can't get over this rear bar. I think it's made the car look the way it does. So this bit of kit, I reckon should be on everyone's car, um, a dirty gear bag, because one, it's super convenient having it there. But two, you can actually pick up rubbish you see out on the tracks, out on the road. And you want to pick it up because you've got somewhere to put it. So this is another Australian company. Um, they do some really heavy duty canvas. The other day I forgot a bucket when I was fishing and I actually had Taylor, like full fish, just sitting in this dirty gear bag. And uh, yeah, it works a treat. The reason we like it so much is because it's also got a bottom zip. So if you wheel the bin up, you don't have to touch your rubbish. You just open the bottom, it falls out into the bin. You've also got this inner liner which is really cool because normally I just remove that multi-functioning things that we love and that's what you need on the road. You need things to be multi-functional because if you brought something for one task only, you just have a collection of stuff that you barely ever use but you really need to keep. So, And that liner just Velcros to the side, you zip it up and you're good to go. So if you guys did want a discount code with Grab Me Gear, we do have 10% off site wide. So SKT10 will get you 10% off all the Grab Me Gear stuff Everything that we haven't showed you as well, dash organizer, clear top bags, 10% off. So don't forget that one. Moving to the back of the car. Now this is probably our favorite thing about the car and we're very proud to show you this. Um, we are very, very proud and excited to announce that we have teamed up with Outback Equipment. They stock the largest range of four wheel drive, camping, caravan, marine, anything you can poke a stick out. We've got a discount code with them now, SKT5, get you 5% off. During the build, we bought a lot of stuff off their website to build Leroy, like the airbag kit. Give back to you guys and to say thank you for supporting us. SKT5 for 5% off, guys. Go and get it. So let's flip it open. How good's a tailgate? I can't believe Toyota got rid of the tailgate. This is probably our favorite thing to take it back. The tailgate wins, but this is the rear drawer system. So we're very proud to show you this because it is very custom. And uh, we've actually had it made by Tanami full driving commercial out of Victoria. It's a dad and two sons that runs Tanami. And uh, they've worked with us and designed this draw system to suit our needs, which is pretty cool. Much we've gone with the 85 Bushman's fridge. We've always had chest fridges, so it was really good to get this um, lightweight, plus everything's right in front of your face, real stackable. We love it. 85 is a good size for traveling Australia as well. We've got two big drawers here. Um, let's slide them out. They're all lock into place. So like literally if you're on a hill, it doesn't slide back in. That was really important too. And slide out table. One thing to mention about these drawer system, it's fully aluminium apart from the top of the drawer system and the wing kit. Everything else is pretty much aluminium. That's purely because we wanted to keep the weight down. So that's why we've done that. So a drawer system like this, if it was fully wooded, weigh over hundred kilos. So this drawer system itself weighs around 65, uh, not including the fridge and the 12 volts. It's all inclusive, we think it's around that hundred kilo mark, which is really good for a drawer system of this size. Uh, we've got them fully filled up. We've got everything in Grab Me Gear clear top bags. So the same mob that make the dirty gear bag, we've got the same brand as clear top bags. Uh, we keep everything really organized because you do carry a lot of stuff on the road, a lot of crap too. So 
to have everything in one place is really good. That just slides back into place, two toggles pushes that away. Top one, same thing. Um, keep all my stuff that I need to get to up here. Sarah can't reach it, so all this stuff is stuff that I use. Like, I always air up, so my air hoses is up here. These are these clear top bags we run. Got surfboard fins. Um, everything's really organized, which we need. Moving along to the side here, let's talk a little bit about the air system. So we've got the Airbag Man digital gauge the side here. And the, the, the reason we've put it here and not in the front of the car is because I wanted everything very central. When I'm hooking up the caravan, I want it all to be here so I can level it out um, all here at the touch of a button. So all you have to do is turn on the ARB compressor um, and then we've got these two black toggle switches down here. So if I push down on the toggles, we're airing up the bags and to let air out, we just reduce them like that. So it's really easy, everything's in one place. We've got the air outlet for pumping up your tires as well. We've got the inverter switch here. So you flick that on and then across this side, we've got the 240 volt outlet. I uh, really like that black little hidden um, outlet there. Looks really neat. Uh, it was really important too, the draw system's black. We love black stuff. So um, it ties in well with the car as well. We've got the iTech World gauge here. We've also got a USB, USB-C outlet to the side and two more USB points to the back here. And that's all hooked up to the 12 volt system in the back, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, we've got a solar input. So if we need any extra solar pa panel charge, we plug, it, plug our flexible blanket in here and that boosts the batteries as well. But to be honest, we haven't really needed to. We've also got two switches here. So the first switch does this light up here and that all that is is a steady amber light. And then the, the other switch does the steady light that's amber around the side of the car as well. So all the switches are local to where you're gonna be camping, which is really cool. We're running solar screens on all the windows. So these are the silver things that you see on our window. Keeps the temperature down also for privacy as well. Really good bits of kit, um, but yeah, we love it. And one thing the draw system had to incorporate was the ability to stack boards on the top of it still. So there's no point making it full height. Still need to put stuff in. So we can carry four surfboards in the back here still, comfortably. Uh, three of mine, one is Sarah's foamy. But um, yeah, so that was very important. We had to keep that and fishing rods and st stuff still get thrown in the back when we need them. So that's pretty much the draw system itself. Uh, we've got the twin ARB compressor tucked into the side as well. Um, I haven't shown you guys that, but that's bolted to this side of the draw system. And I was gonna show you guys this before. This is how we've got power from the rear draw systems up onto the roof. So we've used uh, the channel on the side here. We've drilled a hole into the side of the, the light on the side, the tail light and there's actually a big rummer grommet that goes into the wing kit and then that's how we've got into the car itself. So all we've had to do is drill one little hole in the plastic of the side of the light and that's it. It doesn't uh, destroy the integrity of the light, still works good, still clips into place. We think that's a really good way of getting power into the vehicle without actually drilling another hole because we didn't want to drill a hole into the paint as you could imagine. But that goes up onto the roof, runs through the roof rack and out to everything that we need up on the roof. So that's really good as well. So let's move on to the 12 volt. This is something that really interests me. I'm a Sparky, so I've designed this whole system myself, installed it myself, wired it myself. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, let's have a look. All right, so in the back here, this is where we've put all the 12 volt stuff. So having that upright fridge allows us to have this big void in the back where we can actually put all of our 12 volt. So the big elephant in the room is this big 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from iTech World. We do run iTech World products. We have for the last two years in all of our setups and we do have a discount code with them. It's SKT, that'll get you an extra discount even on sale prices. So remember SKT, that'll save you some money. We've gone with the 200 amp hour iTech World lithium battery under here. Don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, 2000 watt inverter and a 40 amp DC to DC charger in the back here. So that is doing the solar on the roof plus the alternator charge from the uh, alternator obviously. So. That's really cool. We've got all our fuses here as well. That's all very local. They light up when one pop pops, but we haven't had any pop yet. Uh, we've got a cell fire go booster, which I've shown you the aerial on the roof. So we've got Starlink on the van. So it was important for us to have a secondary form of boosting signal while we're out on the tracks and stuff. And this does a pretty good job. Starlink's obviously a lot better. Uh, this is slowly starting to get phased out with 5G, but for 4G and stuff, it definitely boosts your signal and it does work for us as well. 
So that's the 12 volt system. I think it's all tucked up really neatly. We've used this black ducting. So I used to wire switchboards. I've taken a bit of that and used that on the back here. So it's all tucked away nicely uh, and you can't see any annoying cables and it's not messy and stuff. So. so another thing we need to touch on, we've retained all five seats in the back. And before I show you this little custom thing that Baz and the boys at Tanama have done for us, this is pretty cool. I actually really like this. I'm pretty keen to show you. So let's get into that. So not that we ever want to crash the car, but we definitely have to prepare for that and think about that. And having pointy surfboards right behind your head is definitely an issue when you're going to have a crash, obviously, because you don't want them coming through the car and spearing you through the back of the head. So a little invention that Baz and the boys at Tanami made up, they've made us this little box. Now, this box continues on from the same height of the drawers. And pretty well, the, the purpose of this box is obviously to house the top of the surfboards. We've put eyelets in the top so we can actually strap down the surfboard so none of them move in the car, which is first and foremost. But plus, we keep our camera gear. When we're out adventuring, we don't leave any camera gear in the car when we've parked up for the night. But when we go out for an adventure, we put all the camera gear in the car and it goes straight into this box. So the box protects it. You don't want things rattling on top of cameras and expensive stuff. So that houses all of our camera gear, which is the second purpose of that box, which is really cool. So surfboards on top, cameras underneath, uh, and nothing gets damaged. So now these are these solar screens I was talking about. They've all got these little suction caps. So they're just a protective film and they just suck to your window like that. Um, and it obviously keeps the temperature down and also keeps the car a lot darker and cooler. And it doesn't give you as much light glare as well on your eyes. I find that keeping the car nice and dark that's the whole purpose of tint as well, is um, to reduce the light actually getting in the car, which it does the perfect job. So navigator, uh, seat organizer there, we just keep our car cleaning stuff. In the back there, we keep shopping bags, really boring mundane things. We keep a little grab and go uh, first aid kit in the back there as well. It's just a mini one. And uh, I'll show you where we keep our other first aid kit, which is really important for anyone that's building a tour race, having a first aid kit on hand. So if we were to have an accident or something the first aid kit is really easy to grab there's no opening drawers or anything like that that's our main first aid kit and then our secondary one oh that's the <laughs> shit yourself then the secondary grab and go first aid kit is right there in front of sarah too so one on either side of the car uh we think that's very important also tip for beginners now in the past we have had flat batteries in cars right everyone has them and uh we carry jumper leads as well but we swear by carrying a jump starter. So it's all well and good carrying one of these, but don't be the sucker that puts it in the rear drawer system because if you ever have a flat battery on a wagon especially, you can't use your central locking, meaning you need a key slot to open any door. And normally on these newer vehicles, it's only the front two. So you can't open the back door. So putting this in your rear drawer system is useless. So keep it somewhere in the cab where you can reach it from the rear uh, seats. And that way, if you ever have a flat battery, you can start your car. Because we've come home from away trips and stuff at the airport, had flat batteries and been stuck. That's a shit example. We've been out remote before with flat batteries and not being able to get to your jump starter is a real killer. So yeah, keep it somewhere accessible. That's a, a very handy tip that we wish we knew at the start as well. So we keep all that right there. If we did have some people coming with us, we still retain these... We still retain this as a four-seater. Obviously, we can remove this box at any given time and have the fifth seat. But at the moment, four seats is just perfect for us. Let's talk a little bit about performance and what's going on at the bonnet. It's pretty stock, but we have done a few things. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably know what we've done. So this is the engine. This is a 4.5 litre twin turbo V8 engine. This One of the issues with these cars straight off the bat, this is something that Toyota is very aware of is dusting of the engines. So the first thing we did to protect the engine, this car is out of warranty by the way, we've put an airbox on. So normally if your car has warranty, new car warranty, Toyota won't warrant it if you put a new airbox in. So this is obviously lapsed and we've gone and chucked an airbox. The first thing we did, now this is a Patrol Doctor airbox. These guys are out of Victoria as well. I can't fault it to be honest with you. They use bolts to clamp down on the factory filter. So you still retain the Toyota filter. Um, another thing we've done is put a Manta stainless steel exhaust system through the car.
high quality exhaust system and we are loving that. We've retained our DPFs and they're still fully functional. Ronnie Dahl, if you're watching. It's a twin three inch system into a four inch dump. And like I said, DPF backed. Can't stress that enough. Everything is by the books on this car and it's fully legal. Another thing we have we have done is put a secondary fuel filter in it, which we think is very important. Um, this pretty much means if you're in the outback, you pick up some dodgy fuel, um, it's gonna pick it up. If you get water in your fuel, there's a water separator on it as well. Very important for these engines. So another thing we've done with the car is taken it down to Ultimate Diesel Tuning in Dandenong. They did a full day of work on this car. So they did a full intake clean out because what happens with the EGR on these cars, engine recirculating the gases that are pumped out the exhaust, it's an emissions thing, but you're pretty much putting sooty, um, oil fumey air through the engine and it clogs up. So you get this black sooty Play-Doh stuff in your intake manifold and it's just disgusting. And eventually it actually suffocates your engine. So turbo diesels, common rails, especially Toyota's, very, very important to get that cleaned out. Can't stress that enough. And this car's only done about 60,000. So to see what buildup can happen over 60,000, so not many Ks, was just mind blowing. That thing was fully caked up. I'll throw a bit of B-roll over now. While we're in there at Ultimate Diesel Tuning, we also did a trans remap. So changing the shift points for this car so it tows better while we're towing 3.3 tons. Also, these cars are renowned to hunt gears. So pretty well, it doesn't like sitting in fifth and sixth gear and it hunts back gears even when you're not towing. We never tow in sixth gear, fifth's the top, but um, and that's only on straights and downhills we tow in fifth. We normally sit in S4, but having that trans remap and changing the shift points has made it super smooth when you're towing and has made a huge difference. On that point, we've also had a tune thrown through this, so we're putting out a little bit more power. It's not aggressive tune. Uh, we haven't upgraded turbos, injectors, all that stuff. So uh, all we've done obviously is the snorkel and the exhaust system and the airbox, but we've thrown a tune through it. Uh, we've got it back to that factory point. So before we added all this weight, obviously the more stuff you add, the less power you have. And then you throw a 3.3 ton van behind it and you're really bad. You're really down on power. So we got it way back up to standard and we've actually pushed a little bit in the green. So we're only putting out a little bit more power than standard with all this stuff put on it. It was important that reliability is kept. That was our first thing. We wanted to tune the car, but we didn't want to sacrifice any reliability of it. And uh, yeah, I think they've done a fantastic job. Uh, the car drives beautifully and we're keeping that reliability, which is really cool. Welcome to the cockpit. Now. We spend a lot of time sitting in here, so it was very important to make this space as comfy and usable as possible. So we haven't mounted ridiculous amounts of stuff to the dash. We've kept it pretty standard, but turn it on, I'll straighten up the wheel so it's a bit easier. So we're in the car now. Uh, there's a little bit going on to explain, not too much. We didn't want to over uh, complicate the whole system. We've, uh, we've got a, a phone mount up here. Um, we've got this scan gauge three. This is something that we rely on a lot towing a caravan, especially because we have an automatic car. Now we, we monitor things like trans temps, torque converter lockup temperatures, because these cars are, like I said, renowned to hunt gears. And when you hunt gears, a lot of the time your torque converter is unlocked, you're generating a lot of heat. So you need to be keeping that under wraps. Also EGTs, so that's very important when you're towing. Anyone that's towed would know that. Uh, we've got coolant temps, so how hard the engine's working. Um, we keep an eye on a few other things like boost pressure and stuff like that, but they're less important than them first ones that I talked about. We've got an upgraded interface unit here. So we've bought this interface unit from a company called The Fitting Bay. They're out of Victoria as well, um, but pretty much it's a plug and play system that turns the factory head unit. Why oh, is a big wasp in here? This is our interface unit, it's plug and play. It took me about 20 minutes. You pull this whole uh, unit apart you plug this boxy thing in behind it, and then all of a sudden you've got Bluetooth Apple CarPlay on the factory head unit, which is pretty cool. It is a cheaper unit, it was about 800 bucks, and it does have some small minor glitches, but let me tell you, Apple CarPlay is wicked. You can get apps like HEMA, Waze, all that sort of stuff right in front of your face. There's no need to bolt an iPad to your dash to be able to do it, so that was a massive thing for us. We've also got Spotify maps, calls, like it's really cool, like it is, worth doing in our opinion especially if you're going to be spending a lot of time in your car bugger knows why toyota don't do this stuff they seem to be really behind the game in tech um, especially because this is a vx car it comes with leather seats quite a flash interior but no apple carplay but we fixed that uh, we've got obviously the scan gauge which i spoke about before that's a really good bit of kit we um we've been running them for a couple years now pay full price whatever um, and yeah, we love it. 
we've also got a little Buddha here. <laughs> this is not because we're religious. It reminds us that every day above ground is a good one. So we keep that right in front of our face. Um, we've also got the iCheck TPMS. Now these guys make the best TPMS in Australia. I touched on before when we did wheels and tires. Uh, pretty much them little beads screw onto your tires and it monitors your tire pressures, but not only that, temperatures as well. So that's very important. And this one comes with multiple modes. So you can go on-road and off-road mode. So at the moment we've just been on the beach, so we had it in off-road mode. It's solar powered, so no pesky cables on your dash. And yeah, caravan disconnect modes, you can do up to 10 tires, or is it 12? I'm not too sure. But they've got an offer on at the moment. If you use the discount code SKT on a tire pressure monitoring system, They'll also send you a smart gauge, an iCheck smart gauge worth 110 bucks. So 110 bucks for free if you use it right now. It's only gonna go for another seven days. So get onto that one. We've got the Grab Me Gear dash organizer up the top here. We keep two Oricom five watt uh, handhelds in the front here. And that keeps it pretty much clutter free. It's like the Red Arc tow controller, very boring. We've got a torque converter lockup kit. Now let's talk a bit about the torque converter lockup kit. Like I spoke about before, these vehicles are renowned to hunt gears. So having this locks in the torque converter at around fourth gear at about 78 kilometers per hour, that coupled up with our trans tune, our trans remap has just made this car a dream to tow. It doesn't hunt anymore. We're getting better fuel economy, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Almost forgot about that. People are pretty keen about fuel economy. I don't know why, but we don't buy a V8 for fuel economy, but we'll talk about it. Um, so yeah, Red Arc tow controller down here, torque converter lockup kit. That's a Richards kit. So that was already in the car when we bought it, which is good. Uh, we've got our light bar switches and stuff over this side, very standard stuff. We've also got the EVCX throttle controller. So that's their new throttle controller. Been loving that. We run it around Ultimate 2, which takes a lot of the lag out of the throttle. Doesn't give you any more power. I hate it when people say, oh, it makes your car way more powerful. It definitely doesn't. Uh, same power, all it is is just taking the, the lag. The time you put your foot down, the throttles responding quicker that's all it is um so yeah and we've also got the light for our rock lights on the side here which we'll show you in a minute as well i spoke about the 42 inch uh steady spotlight on the the led light bar on the roof we've got that on a three-way switch down here so i can go amber daytime running light or white daytime running light or the middle position on the switch is no daytime running light because new south wales they're illegal so we're not allowed them in new south wales WA they're all right. Um, yeah, different states have different laws. So yeah, that's the inside cab. We've mounted our DTX Oricom um, hard mounted UHF under the dash. And then we've just got the handheld controller here, which goes next to Sarah's leg. And that's just on their little magnetic clip, which is really cool. We've got the sunroof. And like I said, this roof rack is quite slim line. And um, yeah, it's cool that we can still use the sunroof. So if I wanted to fully open this up, you just hit open here. And this is just to prove it because a lot of people don't believe me. So that opens up and you're looking at the bottom of the, the roof rack, but you can still, you know, get air and, and light through this. This is that ARB wind deflector as well, which seems to be really good. And then we've got the light bar mounted in front of that. So we've almost got two wind deflectors and so far zero wind noise. Like it's very quiet in the cab. So that was a, that was a good thing for us. We didn't want like a droning, whistling wind noise when we did all this stuff. So. That's really cool how we've retained all that. Uh, and there's really not too much else going on. We did have seat covers in here, but they got a bit old and manky from the previous owner. So we've ripped them off and now we've just gone back to leather. So we're gonna try keep them going. But if you guys know any really good seat covers, make sure you let them know. Let us know in the comments below what ones you guys recommend. Um, I'm known for getting things. So if you have any extra questions, please let us know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as well. So some of the factory things the VX Land Cruiser comes with, it doesn't come with a front or rear standard locker. All we have is the center diff lock, but it does come with a thing called crawl control, which I was new to because our Prado didn't used to have it. But uh, there's a little dial down here and pretty much if you get bogged, um, it can sort of like, it almost vibrates you out, honestly. Like it just, like the wheels sort of just turn enough not to bog down further. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. So we've got crawl control traction control, um, second start, all the standard buttons down here. Um, we've got our manual select gear stick. So we slap that into um, sports mode, which is S4 when we're towing. And that just allows us to, to, to flip through the gears as we want. And like I said, we tow in fourth gear predominantly. Uh, downhills and straights, we tow in S5. And our fuel economy when we're towing 3.3 tonne caravan behind us 
is around 22 to 23 liters per hundred and that's with the tune as well and when we're not towing it's around that 15 liters per hundred which i think is pretty good considering we're running 34s and the car weighs three and a half ton so that's a good result like i said we don't buy a v8 for fuel economy but 15 liters per hundred when we're not towing is pretty good and 22 is pretty good with a massive van as well so very happy with that and it does it quite comfortably too tows the van really well especially now we've had it tuned all right so a massive question we get all the time it's not about fuel economy but also about weights everyone knows these are heavy vehicles to start with so adding all these modifications it's very important that you keep weight in mind or your your build will just blow out so the reason we've chosen all these brands and cherry pick different accessories from different brands was all regarding our weights we wanted to keep this under that three and a half ton mark and we weighed it the other day me and sarah in the car full tank of juice carton of beer in the back of the fridge and we are bang on three and a half tons so that is beautifully done um i i thought we were going to be around that i was hoping we'd be around three four and a half uh but we aren't we're a little bit heavier and to be honest with you we could probably cut down a few things in the back of the car that we don't necessarily need it's like doubling up on tools i brought a lot of stuff thinking i was going to do sparky work however i haven't we could definitely cut down on weight but three and a half ton is a really good result Keeping in mind, we have a four ton GVM upgrade and the van that we tow is 3,300 kilos. So we are within our weights. I know that the ball uh, weight off the van goes onto the GVM of the car. With that being said, it's a rear door van. So we've got a lighter ball weight, which is 190 kilos on our van. So we're sitting at around 369. That's with the van on the back, GVM and everything. So very good result. We are very happy with that. And uh, to be honest with you, we definitely could cut down on weight in the van as well. We carry a lot of stuff that we don't need to carry. So when you do your builds, guys, make sure you keep your weights in mind. And I actually recommend doing all of your modifications before you even put a suspension kit in your car because the experts that actually are running these uh, suspension brands, they know what you guys need in your car to make it ride nice, but also to accommodate all the weight and accessories you're adding to it. So no good putting a, a small um, constant load spring in the rear before you put any accessories on because of the time you finish modding the car it'll be sitting on its ass so definitely put your suspension kits in last that'd probably be my biggest advice to you if you're planning on building a car so there you go guys we walked through leroy the land cruiser he's uniquely ours we've set it up for what we do it's been touring around australia for two years and it's never been easier um, than it is now because of how we set this car up. So we're very proud to show you. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you reckon. Any questions, feedback, whatever you got to give us, let us know in the comments below. If you did enjoy today's video and you want to see Leroy going around Australia with us, hit the subscribe button, it helps us out a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Woo.